Hello, hello there, guys! It is I, Wolf Q, also Average Goku, the voice of Wolf Q, or Average Goku channel. And today I have a special guest with me because we are going to be doing something that I like to call 25 Questions with the one, the only, the legendary VA from Dragon Ball Z Bridge and his own channel, Masako X. Oh, yeah, of course, that, that's me. And of course, that's me as well. It is very nice to have you here on the channel. I have worked with you countless times. It has always been a pleasure. Well, thank you very much for having me, sir. Oh, oh no, no problem, no problem. We got muffins. I don't know what you feel about cookies or anything like that, but we got plenty of stuff, so just relax and enjoy. All right, can do. All right, so um, these are some questions that was... Uh, posted on my community tab for uh, people in my community to, to ask you questions they've always wanted to ask you but the first question is actually mine mm -hmm. it's a personal question for me uh, since being on the YouTube grind and watching um, your channel my first question to you is how did you get into voice acting? Uh, it was back in the day of like 2005 and I was on message boards back in the day. There was a, a web series called Bonus Stage created by Matt Wilson. And it's like years and years ago and I don't even know whether it even exists anymore. But the point was though is that there was an actress on there and she was playing one of the characters. And then I found the message board that she was on, the Voice Acting Alliance. And I got recommendations from her to join it and I did. I was one of the few British actors at the time. And I got basically encouraged to audition for fan dubs. And they were basically cringe right now. I don't know even remember whether I had my original fan dubs that I did. But it was from that I got to learn, um, well, got to learn the talents of Vegeta 39v6. And we went on to Naruto Bridge and pretty much just went on from there, really. Oh, wow. That's something I did not know. Uh, and like I said, for the record, I didn't really discover... Um... T4 star stuff for your work until my friends actually got me into it later on around 2009 ish. Mm, yeah, this is like it's like nearly 20 years ago, so that's kind of crazy. And to put that in perspective, guys, I was like 13 at that time. <laughs> in my 20s, not. Oh, I was like 13. Oh, jeez. Yeah. Oh, now you start to feel your age. <laughs> oh, yeah, like, yeah, it's not far off like half my life. Oh, yeah. uh, you look great for you. I've seen you look great. I, I wouldn't imagine you in your 30s. You look great. Well, thank you. Um, so this is a question from the community, and this is question number two. Um, they ask, I'll, ask, I'll say this as Wolf Kip. Ask him how he came up with his Goku voice. Well, it was kind of a mixture of a lot of things. So uh, I actually really like the talents of uh, Peter Kalamis and Ian Collette. Oh, okay. So the first two, uh, the Canadian ones for the Ocean dub. And Kalamis can do some really good screams. Yeah. Like re like his Kaioken one from The World's Strongest. Ooh. ooh oh, I, I personally good. love Peter Kalamis as, uh, I, I, I do love Funimation. I love Sean Schimmel's version, but I think for me, Dead Zone, the Ocean dub, I thought was just amazing. I had the pleasure of meeting Kalamis and he's a really nice dude and he really likes talking about wine. So when I was a compare for a Dragon Ball convention, I always like to, whenever I'm interviewing people, just get the um, interviewee to kind of, you know, what, what kind of things do you like? What things are you into? And then I find a thing to make, to relate to them. So it was always really nice to have that. So basically I took the, uh, I kind of took the inner nation from Kalamis and then kind of just kept up with the no Nozawa kind of chirpiness. Yeah, yeah, I thought the late, uh, uh, that you had quite a bit of her. And then, of course, the late Kirby Morrow. God rest his oh, soul. Oh, God rest my legend. And, yeah, he had, a re he re had a really good Goku voice, too. So it's a kind of a mixture of those four actors and actress. Just came up with that, really. So ultimately, you come up with something like this. Then there you go. Like For me, I actually know I'm, I'm more to Peter Kalimus' as Rolf <laughs> as in Head at Nitty. He's actually, uh, I just would love to see him do that. Oh, yeah, it's a good time whenever you just mm -hmm. As for, like, me, guys, actually, I, I've been doing this voice since I've been young. I didn't recognize this as the Goku voice, because, again, I wasn't really watching uh, you back in the day. I just kind of did this voice as a wacky anime voice. It wasn't until, like, I got on Discord until people saying, hey, you sound like uh, uh, a, bridge, a bridge Goku. I was like, huh? What? <laughs> I didn't know. Uh, this was a... Uh... And then I... 
like I like when I first watched uh, Team Four Star, like I didn't get it because it wasn't squeaky enough. Like I didn't notice your voice was getting more higher, like pitched to like the later uh, episodes. So like I didn't get it at first, but the more I watched the show, the more I was like, oh okay, I see the sim. I, I can see it a little bit. Oh, wolves over time. Like I would say, the earlier the earlier Goku voice. Well, it kind of just sounds like me trying to do a strong, sad impression. It kind of just sounds like that, really. Mm -hmm. But uh, it's about episode 28 when you really start to hear the Goku voice that you currently see or hear. Yeah. And then that, it kind of evolved. And it's pretty much gotten to a stable groove now. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay, so here is a, a, here's a follow-up question. Um, question number three. What is your favorite hobby you enjoy when you are not doing voice acting? Oh, well... It's um, well, it's something I've been indulging in in my second channel currently. Well, I say second channel, other channel. Uh, basically, I love me some cards and I like motorsport. So I've been indulging in one of my hobbies for like 25 years. Stuff that I was into before Dragon Ball. So like when I was 12, um, it's Formula One and it's been really becoming quite popular in America. And on my other channel, Law VS, that's pretty much where I get to vent my feelings. Because for the longest time, I really had no one to talk to about the sport other than my dad. And it was like, I really want to find people I, 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 I have things in common. So I went to an Irish convention at Kumacom, and I got talking with this artist who's now one of my good friends, Hayley Mulch. And she was um, just doing all these things. She made these little keychains of the F1 drivers. And I was like, <gasps> oh! I've got somebody to talk to! And then every time we go to these conventions now, we just talk about Formula One all the time. So that's pretty much what I do. Cars. There you go. Do you like the movie Cars? Oh yeah. I like me some car. I drove a car once. Fair enough. It was fun. Fair enough, fair enough. Um... Oh, question number four. How did you get into Dragon Ball Abridged? Well... It all comes down to the fact that I voiced a character called Goku and his son for a while with the thing with Lenny Patola and Vegeta 3986. And we did the first two abridged movies together. And then Kaiser came along and basically asked what you, I'd like to do the voice again. And I sure did. So we were basically just like, we all liked each other's work and we wanted to work on something together. What thing do we all have in common that we watched when we grew up? Dragon Ball. So. Kaiser had a lot of information about DBZ. He's arguably one of the more talented editors, especially at the time. And he became the showrunner of the series. So we just wanted to work together. There you have it, guys. They came together like the Power Rangers or Ginyu Force. Pretty much. In fact, there's actually a really cool fan animation for like a contest we did ages ago called Team Four Star Force, which basically we become the, the de facto Ginyu Force in some way. What? Remember, would you consider yourself? I, I, I think maybe Jux of the group. <laughs> uh, I probably would consider myself like as Berta. Really, Berta? Okay. All right. Yeah, just because. <laughs> well, well, basically, I am the tallest of the group, and Berta's quite tall. I, I'm actually pretty short. I'm on like five, six, and all like that. I'm actually, I'd probably be the giant one. Aw, oh, height's got nothing to do with it, pal. It's all about how tall you feel as a person. And how do you explain Gold, though? Um, he's got a lot of work to do. He's working on it! <laughs> and I had to set you on that. I had to set you on that. I'm working on it, jeez! <laughs> Alright, let's go to question five. Um, let's see. Got any other favorite anime besides Dragon Ball? Also... What are your opinion on mac and cheese? Ooh, mac and cheese, huh? Well, it's good comfort food. So, I got no, I got no bones about that. Well, I wouldn't really want to have bones in my mac and cheese. Hmm. But I would say in terms of my anime, my, my top three are... Number three is Mysterious Girlfriend X. Uh, it's a bit of a controversial topic, but when you actually get past the saliva, <laughs> it's actually a really wholesome I'll, romantic I'll, I'll, thing. I was going to we... I was gonna say, bruh, you, you, I watched a lot of anime. I... <laughs> it's got, it's nowhere near as bad. If you just get past that, it's not. and it's just like, yeah, it's a romantic comedy, and it's like the bit, 
yeah, they're a couple. They're figuring out stuff. And what I love is that um, the mangaka basically said, I didn't make them 16 or 18. They're 17. You know, it's like that in-between thing. Will they get, Will they graduate? Maybe. Maybe not. Will they actually do it? Probably not. But it's just like, you know, yeah. they're just figuring stuff out. Of course, as teenagers nice do. Whole yeah, as I know, there's people like, um, trust me, I, I've seen teenagers do stupider stuff and more weird stuff. So it really didn't bother me. I just thought it was just the weird anime. Nah, but well, as I watched Urabe, it, yeah, it was, it was yeah, fun. It is cool. Urabe is pretty good. And uh, second is a uh, classic Mahromatic. Um, Baldi's Hammer's art style is so good. And just uh, what I loved is that it was a really nice, wholesome harem anime. And at the end of every episode, you get a countdown for how long Maru has left to live. And it always makes you feel, oh man, I feel sad. But it was all, it was a really fun, admittedly a bit fan service heavy, but you know, it was 2000s, come on. But my favorite is, my favorite is Martian Success in the Desco. And this is basically something that came out at roughly the same time as Evangelion. The same uh, actor who plays Shinji, Uji Ueda, plays the main character. Oh, nice. And it's, it's, it's a mecha satire. And it's about a guy who's a cook who doesn't want to be a pilot of a giant robot, but he has the means to. So it was effectively, just get in the damn, uh, damn robot Akito. <laughs> and it's, yeah, it's, it's, it came at a time when mecha anime was really in the doldrums. And it actually is so good, it became a, a mecha anime in its own right. That's so right. it's something I will always, I mean, I think I've watched it through like 10 times. It's only like a two, it's only like a 26 episode anime, so it doesn't take too long to get through, but it's my personal favorite. And like I said, like I said, I watch Gold, like I, I still say Golden Boy is one of, one of the best animated things I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it is as fan survey as it was. Uh, that and Fully Cooly. I think Fully Cooly actually got a comeback uh, a couple years ago, but as far as like short anime, animated films that really left an impression on me back in the early days, aside from Dragon Ball, Inuyasha, and all, all the classics, I was on Adult Swim. I really loved Golden Foy. I was a little too young to watch it, but I loved Golden Boy. I loved Fully Cooly. Uh, I watched um, Detective Conan, obviously Case Closed, or Shin Shan as well. Uh, it was... I was actually upset that they only did like three seasons of, of uh, Shin Chan or Color Shan, how you, how you want to pronounce it. Um, some good stuff there. And let's see. All right, I think this is this is um, one maybe you could answer. Um, the question six is: I want to know which Goku is the strongest in their universe. So I guess they're referring to my Wolfku and your Goku. I can probably answer this one. Like guys, I did a comic dub on it not too long ago. Where I had my my Wolfku against his Goku to get that answer. Let's just say he he beat the crap out of Wolfku. <laughs> oh dear, it was a massacre. It wasn't even a. It was I <laughs> until he went over until Goku went over. You you weren't you weren't pulling your punches there. That was like. Oh come on! I mean, it's gonna, gonna give you a fair fight. I if I if I held back. It, yeah, what would be I? I would be just a shill of myself. That was quite traumatizing, because from my point of view, it was supposed to be a sparring session. Well, you know what I got to say to you there, pal? What? Get good. Oh, oh, get good. Right, oh, I see him. Okay, all right, I'll go, I'll go get train. Get good, son. Where, where's, I to get you. Where is my DMC music, and I'm going to just start working out, and going to have chocolate chip bubbles without you. Oh, my favorite one is like, it's a big pizza, pizza, pizza cake. If the wind is hazy, you gotta cook, cook it by the book. Yeah, lazy town. <laughs> That's training music ever. All right, so question seven is, what was the earliest fandom you guys were involved in and is and the experience of it? Oh, um, in terms of my earliest fandom, oh, well, yeah, well, basically, son, is that the internet wasn't really something I kind of gotten into. But I guess it would have to be the Dragon Balls. Basically. Yeah, early 2000s, that was when the Dragon Ball Z fandom in um, the West was actually relatively small. Like, Khan Zenshu was by far the biggest uh, repository of information. So Dragon Ball, basically, because in the late 90s, I didn't really interact with anybody in terms of fandom. So, yeah. Dragon Ball's always been a fandom I've been involved in, in some degree. Yeah, and like my school, it was like, it was Dragon Ball, there was Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, Digimon, Beyblade. Um, but 
Mm. I never really went into the conventions at the time. We just kind of traded action figures and car. Oh my god, Yu Gi Oh! and Dragon Ball action figures and Pokemon stuff was just so. Like, everybody had their own little clicks too, like little anime clicks. So, like, what click were you for? Were you for the Beyblade click or Digimon, Pokemon? Oh, well, I went to at UK schools, anime was practically non existent except for the Pokemans, <laughs> where we would trade the Pokemon cards and. No one would actually play the game. You just trade the cards. This look pretty. I didn't. Even, I still didn't understand how the game worked. Oh, no one did. No one did. In fact, our, our Pokemon cards at our school got banned. Oh wow! Like, they got banned, so we had to settle for Pogs. Um, That's how old I am. <laughs> That's how old I am. Like us, we had like this like Yu-Gi-Oh. I remember my uncle get, got me this, bought me this big bag of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. And I was just flexing at school. But one day, as I was getting my lunch, I had the bag face down. And when I went to go pick it up, all the cards spilled out. <laughs> and everybody rushed to get them. I got, like, half of them back. And then it ended up getting washed with my pants. Aww. So, yeah, that was the end of my Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, collection. What was that, like, fourth grade? <laughs> fifth grade? But, yeah. All right. Here's a, here's a good one. This is for both of us. This is an interesting question. Okay. What would happen if a bridge or AG and Masako X Goku did a fusion? Would they become a bridge o X Goku? Huh. I always thought it would be Goku. Uh, Cause you know you're, you're you're smashing you know the two Gokus together to so be Goku. I mean, you gotta come up like. A bridge wolf coo? Or, or, or you can go Goku with all the extra vowels and stuff. I feel like, but like, how would enemies address us in battle like that? They get so. I can see Vegeta getting very annoyed. Oh, you, you don't know the half of that, pal. And and then like like our real name would it be Wolfrot? <laughs> huh? Let's just stop at Wolfrot. No one wants to get the Wolfrot. Damn you, Wolfrot! You won't be that better than me! I'll find another Vegeta! You work on that, buddy. You work on that. <laughs> so there, uh. there you have it, guys. That 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 would be our uh, our fusion name. And uh, for question nine, we have... Have you ever thought of rap battling each other with our Goku voices? <laughs> well, I, I almost did a rap once, but apparently I wasn't good enough. And I won't say who it was because, you know, that's out there in that person. But... You know, I've always wanted to have a go at rapping, and uh, I was like, it would be cool. Especially with a chicken seizure bacon type of thing. You know, putting that round on the tortilla wrap, and oh, it's so good. Oh, oh, you're talking about the music. Oh, I thought you were talking about raps, the, you know, the E kind. Oh, well, I'll ask it too. I mean, like, I, <laughs> I mean, I'm not a, uh, I'm not opposed to it. It's like, I can do, like, flow and verses. I used to, like, um, epic rap battles. I've, I've listed plenty of hip hop in, in my day. And, uh, I just feel like these, like our Goku's, will rap about food. <laughs> Pretty much. Let me tell you Course. something, Wolf Q. You might be a muffin, but you look like a cookie. I'll beat you so hard they think you were Krillin, and then I'll take you up and down all around. They think you were Yamcha. Come back, slap you around, call you my Vegeta, sing it back to the future, and call you Trunks. And I hope you don't hit, like. I, I, I can't come up with a flow though. I can't come up with a bar. <laughs> it's like you may be the man, but do you know the Muffin Man? No, I don't think so. <gasps> His bars are hot. They're full of fire. If I don't come out for this one, I will lose all my desire for muffins. Popo. Yes, Goku. Get my battle pants. <laughs> oh, this is good stuff. Yeah. Um, oh, oh. If you ever uh, do a rap battle, you want like we all, I, I'm all for it. I just, need, I just need like a script for it, like so I can know what how to flow. That, that'd be interesting. You just came up with something. It could work. Oh yeah. Um. Here's okay. Question ten. Do you miss uh, Dragon Ball, the Dragon Ball Z Bridge series, and what was your favorite moment that you did? Or liked doing as being Goku. Um. Oh, of course I miss it, but you know it had its natural lifespan, and you know it came to a, a good conclusion. Um. I would probably say like one of the, the things that I was always funny. I always find I corpse that every single time, and it took me like years to actually get the joke. I said because I said the line, never got the joke. Was in Dead Zone Abridged. Yeah, you know, right at the end, the whole thing about you know the whole thing about Linear, and. Uh, I knew about Linus stuff, but yeah, 
Let's go on, go home. It's almost time for Dick Fest. And I thought, it's okay, I get a joke now. Dinner, breakfast, something you have as a midnight snack. But I didn't get that at the time I said the line. So I thought it was literally Dick Fest. Oh, wow. So I spent a good five minutes ago. It's almost time for Dick <laughs> <laughs> I, I corpse and Kai's just like, oh, are you okay, pal? Uh, yeah, okay, okay. Let's go, Uncle. It's almost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm an adult. Are Basically, you? I, 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 don't I, I, I don't think you are. I don't think you are. Never that 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 that's the fondest memory I, I recall. <laughs> that's a great one. Also, uh, Pepe also asked like. Uh... Uh, I think this one for me, how do I distinguish, like, people from my voice, and, and which is, you know what's crazy, like, I actually deliberately made my voice squeakier to make a much more distinction, and somehow people still think I'm you secretly, like, they, they, they like, I'm you undercover, like, I don't even sound British, or, like, I'm from the UK, I have a lot of UK friends, and I'm, I'm just like, me and Lord sound nothing like other than our, our Goku voices, because I, I speak like this, well, and, uh. Yeah, it, it's like, it's, it's. I don't really, it's really hard to kind of like teach people how to do it. And, you know, I, uh, no disrespect, you are close. You are one of the closer one, um, versions. Yeah, I've no, I, I watched your video and I was like, I I am closer, but I, I, I make it differently deliberately. I'm actually a lot. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, you're, I, you are, I know. You're definitely on the closer than I've like. Yeah, I know your cadence. But I've yet to hear somebody, I've yet to hear somebody that's like, oh, Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's oh, that's that's me. Yeah, I've yet to hear that. Yeah, and I I re I relish the challenge. I relish the challenge to hear somebody who could, you know, mimic me that closely. Yeah, like me, I wanted to make a distinction. Like I wanted to like the only like homage. I like the only homage I like to make to you is the muffin stuff and the voice. But I like I wanted to make the voice a little bit more Wolf Kuzones. Like uh, I, I deliberately mm. what okay, what does Moscow's Goku do, and then what can I do to be different from that? So I decided, you know. Um, let me make my voice a little bit more squeakier and a little bit more exaggerated. Uh, I wanted to make Goku kind of all over the place, almost like a fort wall breaking character. More exaggerated than the bridge, Goku? Oh, yeah. Is there such a thing? You, you <laughs> bet your sweet baby I am, and I take that title with pride. As you should. Yeah, so like, I, I like, make my stuff a little bit higher, just a little bit more off the wall. And to allow it to just let it breathe a little bit more, because at the end of the day, I can't copy uh, your voice tones because it's something that's unique to a, a person. And uh, once I figured out that one, I just kind of wanted to do my own thing. Uh, it kind of just spit raw from there. So, uh, but most people, yeah. You know, but to be fair, it, I always said like, if you guys really want to know the difference, just put our voices together and you'll see it. But I guess like you know. With my similarity, yeah, my, with my similarity, they they can't really see. But even though we've done like two like really cool videos where I did the Goku Black and Goku voice to really put our distinction, they they's like I still can't tell the difference. Like, okay, well, all right, uh, fair enough then. <laughs> we got one bonus question. Uh, this was a good one. They wanted to ask you: um, Will Masako be featuring in the Hethel series or the um, DBZ Abridged Creator Commentary? Well, I have done the episode 30 uh, commentary. I did my own commentary. So I did do that. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of Hiffle, I don't really know yet. I haven't recorded anything for Hiffle, but I think there's still a few episodes left to go. So you never know because Goku's technically in Hiffle. Yeah, you know, he's in the other world right now. So, you know, maybe there might be some interaction with Raditz. That's a good point. I don't know. That's a good, that's a good point. Yeah, like... Uh... Mm. That's a good point. I, I I'd actually be happy to see that. Mm. So that's pretty much what I got, really. Well, there you go. There you guys have it. And that was 10, 11 or twelve questions with the legendary version of me, me. <laughs> that's me. All right. So with that taken care of, let's go have that muffin. Can do. That sounds great. Don't you eat up all the glass time. Don't you start. I'm gonna finish! This time! Mm. Ah! Goku won! <laughs>